that are. Oh, oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> okay. Welcome back, Craig. <laughs> This I mean, it says it's a fucking thing. Oh my god! How, how is I mean, this? It gonna... says the backup's going. So I don't how, know. How how is this going to sound with uh, G Arc recording this? Is this going to? Oh my god! This is going to be just absolute chaos. Oh yeah, I'm enjoying this episode already. This is great. All right. This is fantastic. I can't really edit this out, so I'm going to give uh, the audience a little uh, explanation of what the fuck we're talking about. So. Typically, we record with a bot called Craig on Discord. It captures everybody's um, voice as a separate line of audio. And when we went to start, it was not responding at first. Then it would just join and immediately leave and give us like a bullshit uh, error message. So we got Giark, which is their backup bot, did the same thing. We got a third bot that was... We were just about to use when Giark joined, and then Craig just fucking joined now. So now we have two fucking bots recording this thing. Yeah. So, so hopefully they don't, like, mess each other up somehow. Supposedly, Giark just goes straight to, like, Craig's files. So, like, it, it'll, like, save it to your the files you get from Craig normally. So cool. hopefully it's working fine. Yeah. So uh, back on topic with horror movies. Now, of course, you have guys said that you are kind of here and there with it, a little on and off. Well, besides Circle Man, you kind of, you watch a lot of movies. So, anyways, uh, what would you say is your favorite horror movie? Hmm. I can start if you want. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I mean, like, I don't know if this is, like, a full strict horror movie, but definitely the movie that creeps me out the most um, Midsummer. I don't know yeah. if you guys remember that one from a couple years ago. I was, that was, uh, I, I've heard of it. I don't know what it is. Uh, basically, for anyone who doesn't know, because it was kind of like a weirder movie, is um, it's about this girl, right, where her sister kills her parents and commits suicide. Nice. And so this, yeah, fun, fun topic all around. <laughs> but um, the girl ends up like you know like having like huge like depressive episodes, and uh, her boyfriend tries leaving the country with his friends for like a thing for a foreign exchange student like was going to invite them back to sweden um and so she's like you can't just leave me here like i'm going through some shit right now so he's like all right i guess you can come because he's just a shitty boyfriend and when they get there they end up going to this like commune that like ends up being a weird death cult and there's a lot of weird trippy visuals and like it just like it's it's the kind of movie that you watch it and you're just like really unsettled by like just the sound design and, like the backgrounds and shit so it just that movie got me <laughs> mm. it was Sounds one of those like... things that like it... no you can go yeah I, well i was actually gonna ask is that the movie where it's like the poster is like it almost looks like some guy with a greek like uh I don't know what what is it they wear on their heads like the little wreath thing. Oh, you yes. gotta be kidding me! What's what? the matter? My hearing aid battery is dying, and the batteries oh. are in the house. Oh no! Mm. Um. Well, it's just one ear, so whatever. How about you, Herokus? What What's your favorite horror movie? Well. I guess I'd have to say it's probably a tie between Alien and Alien 2. I assume those count. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's okay. probably it. Nice. Um, in terms of maybe my favorite awful horror movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Our relationship. Yes. <laughs> um... <laughs> I have to say maybe um, there was a movie called One Miss Call that was a while ago. It was there was an American remake of the Japanese original, and the Japanese one was just kind of really fucking weird. <sighs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't really. It, it was just. It was fucking bizarre. Is it wasn't terrible. It's just the acting was kind of weird in it. 
What about you, Sixfoot? Um, well, I want to preface this by saying I have not seen that many horror movies. Although this, you know, this October, I, well, if I'm not too busy, I plan to, like, at least watch a couple more. Um, I'm, uh, you know what, my answer is, uh, it, it's more of a horror, it's a horror comedy, but Tucker and Dale versus Evil, I would have to say. Mm. Are you familiar with that one? I've heard of it. I haven't seen it, but it's on my watch list. Uh, so it's, well, I'm, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's essentially, well, Alan Tudyk and I forget the other guy's name. They play a couple of rednecks and basically they just want to go to their summer cabin. Like, that's all they want to do. They're just going to their summer cabin. At the same time, these college kids are, well, I guess it's a spring break trip. They're going to this like same area for spring break and uh well let's just say hilarity ensues because they think the the rednecks are out to kill them but really they're just a couple of dumbasses <laughs> yeah man i'll watch whatever alan tudyk's in man that dude is that dude's damn funny oh yeah um so for me my favorite horror movies would probably be Nightmare on Elm Street 1 and uh, 3. Mm. The second one is uh, kind of a mess, but like an enjoyable mess. It is incredible. The second one is incredibly homoerotic. I, oh. would recommend, <laughs> I would recommend any of you, even in the audience, to watch the second Nightmare on Elm Street movie. That was the one I started with. Because Ma Master Belt, one of our friends, was like, this movie is one of the gayest things I've ever seen. In, like, the literal sense, not the derogatory sense. I was like, oh, I need to see this. I was not <laughs> disappointed. Like, I, I remember you saying, like, I remember you two going up, like, it was like this time last year and a little after. You guys were just talking nonstop about, or was it last year? But the point is, I remember, like, you two were just, like, talking nonstop about, like, you had this like massive list of horror movies mm -hmm. that you two were watching, and yeah, when it when the time came for you two to talk about Nightmare on Elm Street two, it was just nothing but like this movie is a gay allegory or so, whatever. Like mm -hmm. that's that's how you guys put it. Yeah, I'm, there's I'm, one. Sorry, continue. I was just gonna say like, well, I haven't seen it. I've only seen the first Nightmare on Elm Street, which was actually pretty good, kind of unsettling yeah. at parts. But I have not seen the second one, so I, well, I I guess you could say I don't really know what is meant by a gay allegory until I've seen it. There's one scene, this is a spoiler, but the thing is that this is just how I, ha I have to say this scene to get the point across is there's this gym teacher and he gets... He's in the shower and he's completely naked and Freddy Krueger takes these towels and starts slapping his ass a couple of times <laughs> and just get like that. And there's like this, there's this scene where the main character goes to this like gay bar and the gym teacher's in, in there, but he's wearing like this leather kit, like this like kink outfit. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. But um, oh yeah, you mentioned, oh, sorry, what? No, I just said, oh my god. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would recommend watching it. It's a it's a it's a trip. But uh the first one and the third one, like storytelling wise, direction wise, and all this stuff are the best ones. If you wanna stick to serious movies, one and uh three are your go to. I, I, I need to see the third one just just for the sole reason that there is well, there's that docking song, uh Jury Warriors that's like heavily it, supposedly like prominently featured in the movie like if you look at if you go to like if you go to youtube type in dokken dream warriors the the music video is literally like clips from the movie as well as the band playing with freddy krueger it's kind course. of interesting of course you'd find a way to bring up dokken in this yes are you gonna cry about it <laughs> no no, I don't think I will. I don't know if it's on your end. What's up? What what happened? Circle. Oh no. Oh, oh fuck, we lost him. Freddy Krueger. 
Joker got him. Damn. <laughs> Uh, so, my prostate is larger than usual. <laughs> oh, okay, I just hopped back in. Uh, my, my audio cut out for a second there. I didn't know if you guys could... Oh, hear. shit. <laughs> I just hopped back in. I'm hearing Venom go, my prostate's larger than usual. <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were saying Freddy Krueger got you, but I guess he got scared by some... I guess Freddy Krueger's kryptonite is enlarged prostates. <laughs> I guess so. They should have tried that in the first movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've Johnny. seen the first one, um, the first uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. I, uh, I, I definitely enjoyed it. I thought it was a pretty good movie. Um, there were definitely, I felt like it had a little bit of that, like, you know, trope of like, oh, you know, all the kid, the teenagers, they're gonna have sex and they're all degenerates, so Freddy's <laughs> gonna come and get them, you know. <laughs> but uh, I, it was one of those things that it's like, I feel like I've seen that trope done to death. But it's kind of funny thinking about how like that was kind of like one of the first instances of that, like. <laughs> One of the mm -hmm. earlier, like, actual, like, where the trope came from. So, yeah, it's, it was a, but it was a good premise. I Like, the idea of, like, a some guy that gets you in your, like, when you're sleeping was something that uh, I feel like you could easily, like, I can see why they built, made three of them at least, you know, and are probably still making more. Mm -hmm. There's, well, like, that, six of them. Yeah, yeah, it's like, there's, yeah. There's, the, there's the remake from, was it, what year was it? Like, 2010 or 20, excuse me, 2011 or something like that. Like, they got, oh. um... What's what's the guy's name from? He was Rorschach and Watchmen. It's like I Jackie Lee something. I forget something like yeah. that. Cassidy, Jackie Lee Cassidy. I want to say. Mm, maybe. Maybe. I, but I don't who know. are you talking about? Yeah. Point is, though, like he seems like he'd be a great Freddy Krueger, but apparently the movie was dog shit. Yeah, the directing of that version of Freddy Krueger was not too great because the thing is, is you have Freddy Krueger from. You know, Ro yeah, Robert England's Freddy Krueger, who's like, Rrr! and uh, the one from the remake, he talks like this, and he's like <laughs> really like fucking weird. It's unnecessary, and also Clancy Brown's in there, uh, Mr. Krabs. Oh and yeah, he's cool. It, wait, he what? During Clancy Brown, he, he you... burned down in an elementary school. That's what I thought you said. Yeah. <laughs> hey, SpongeBob! SpongeBoy, me Bob! I need you to light this Molotov cocktail and throw it at the elementary school. <laughs> Freddy Krueger's haunting me dreams, SpongeBoy. You need to get him. Mr. You want Krabs, me dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Krabs, isn't this illegal? <laughs> It's only illegal if you get caught, Mr. Squidward. It's only illegal if you get caught. SpongeBob, where's my cocaine? <laughs> Dude, you really are Squidward, and you just proved it. <laughs> Ironic. <laughs> I would pay to hear the entire prequel trilogy redubbed with just Squidward's voice instead of Palpatine's. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? <laughs> I, that could be done. I don't, I don't think I would edit the entire movies like that. But I could just take his like his best scenes or something. <laughs> That's the real I could do that. movie right there. That can be your two hundred subscriber special. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> but yeah, back on topic. Um, so. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, uh, go ahead, Venom. Uh, how many of you here have seen the Babadook? Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen it actually. I saw it a long time ago, <laughs> like yeah, twenty fifteen maybe. So I haven't seen it in a bit. Have I seen yeah. the what? Babadook. It's isn't that like an Australian horror movie or something yeah. like that? I, I have no idea what you're saying, Mike, because I'm only I'm only on one hearing aid now, so I'm like I'm only hearing like the left side. Uh, yeah, it's it's literally the Baba Duke. Oh, like, okay, yeah. okay, okay. The gay icon. I've heard of it. I've heard mm -hmm. about it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. It's obviously it's been a long time. I don't remember. I don't remember that much from it. I just remember thinking like. 
Shit, this mech, this movie's actually decent, at least. Yeah. I, I've i seen it, like, once, like, a long time ago, but I remember enjoying it. Because not much good comes out of Australia. So once something <laughs> like that comes out, it's nice. It's nice. You gotta appreciate it when you can. I mean, Steve Irwin and uh, Finding Nemo, at least, is the where it takes place. Oh. That's pretty uh, right there. Uh, uh, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna go in back into my house and get a battery just so I can fucking hear what you guys were saying. Oh, All right. Okay. All right, <clears throat> give me. I'll be back in a few minutes. Go ahead, continue. Do you want me. to continue? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Keep talking. Oh, okay. All right, I, I got the perfect thing to bring up since he's not here. Um, so it was last year. I had you guys like I I did like a little watch party for this one, switching gears a little bit. Um, the Forsaken. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I remember that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so for those well probably nobody in, that's listening knows what this is. So it's a 2000, I want to say 2001, or it, it's like an yeah. early 2000s indie horror movie starring Kerr Smith, who, if you've seen Dawson's Creek, he was in that at some point. Um, and a bunch of other people that probably nobody's heard of. Yeah, it's, the film just reeks of early, two, like late 90s, early 2000s. Not necessarily a bad thing. I kind of like it, but um, yeah, it's basically this, it's, it's this guy trying to go to his sister's wedding in Florida, his car breaks down, and then this, unbeknownst to him, this vampire rolls up in a convertible, this cool-ass looking dude's like, hey, do you want to ride? And then they essentially go on a whole journey to, uh, find, the Forsaken is, uh, it's like a group of vampires, and... Yeah, they're trying to find this missing girl that like ran away from their cult or something like that. I'm surprised you can remember anything from that movie because I well, the only thing I remember is the one part where he said like um like our generation only got South Park and MTV. <laughs> and that was like yeah. <laughs> that was that was like my that was like the only like I just remember everything else I just remember like and like the aesthetic like I don't remember like any of the story because I was just like hmm. it was just all over the place, man. Yeah, it yeah. was. It, well, it's not a very, uh, well, let's just say the reception for the movie wasn't that great, but I personally liked it just, <clears throat> well, as weird as this might sound, the reason, like, the reason I watched this originally, so, like, first time was, like, my freshman year of high school, so about 2013. You want to take a guess as to why I watched this movie? Because it has Metallica in it. Close. Not Metallica. Oh, it's not Metallica music? Oh. <laughs> okay. Is it Dawkins? No. Oh. I, okay, you, you go. It, uh, Nickelback. Oh, that's fucking mm. work. Yeah, so, it fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's, like, so... Yeah. It was before they got, like, really famous. So, like, you know, they had a couple songs from their second album, which... Like, nobody knows what that, like, well, nobody that knows who Nickelback is now knows about anything before, like, the radio hits. Yeah. So, it's like, yeah, they're trying to capitalize off the grunge era, but goddamn, their music from that just holds so much sentimental value, and it's just, I don't know, it's, 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 it's I don't know, it's just... Okay, before we go back on topic... Yeah. Is it a grunge band? Yeah, it's yeah, sort of. But okay, yeah. that's an interesting fact. But uh, yeah, the Forsaken that was a weird move. I remember vividly that one scene where the main vampire dude is fucking that woman and biting her neck at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, it, that was it, a, that it was got a little. Scene. Literally, mm -hmm. the opening scene is like I, I mentioned the chick that like the. The chick that ran away from the... Like, she's a vampire, but she ran away from the others. Yeah. Literally, the opening scene is... Like... Focused on her titties... When she's in the shower. <laughs> That's a 2000s movie. Too, but... <laughs> There's such a, like, a distinct... Like, era. That I, I want to make a movie... That's, like, just, like, solely, like, in that era. 
<laughs> like 2000s like aesthetics where it's like everything's kind of like a little washed out mm. and there's like a lot of like evanescence in the background and it's just like play it like a hundred percent serious spiky hair just, like, you know, oversized polo shirts i, mm -hmm, I just everything. i just i just come back to hear like titties in the shower or something <laughs> <laughs> That's a great quotes out of this one. It's gonna, it's gonna be interesting um, when I go back to edit, edit this and I get to hear what the fuck you were talking about for the past five minutes. I was just saying how long it was. I was just saying how much of a pussy you are. I'm kidding. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. No, it... You'll learn. It, it, this is the really weird thing about being the editor in situations like this. Is like I'm talking. I don't know what you said, but I'm yeah. going to be listening to this in the future. And hearing shit that I didn't hear before. It's well, weird. it's you'll you'll be disappointed no matter what. So I uh, wish we could talk to him when he was gone. Yeah, uh, <laughs> past tense. Well, how do I know that you didn't? Well, I'll just do it to your face. You're a fucking hoe. <laughs> uh, ironic. That's the oh, pot yeah. Calling the kettle black. Oh, call me a kettle now, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How dehumanizing of you. Wow. <laughs> and ironic. And you, move, you use kettles to make tea, so there you go. It's actually yeah. in, uh, a compliment in disguise. Oh. Okay, I'll tea a shell. Spin on it. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, on topic. Jeez, uh, <laughs> this one is so off topic. Um, yeah, so that was... Okay. I just contributed something, so I guess, uh, Rokas, have you got anything? Yeah, or... let me, um, let me think out of my other, other things I've watched. Oh, I I'm have gonna, something. Oh. I'm gonna list off, like, any horror movie I can think of. So I already mentioned the Alien movies. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, there's just the first two. Fuck the third and fourth one. <laughs> Didn't even watch them, so... Only yeah, the they series, they, they completely. If you don't want to be spoiled, I'll just say they completely shit on how the second movie ends. Oh, mm. cool! You always it's love like, when the sequels do that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's just awful. Um. A horror movie oh. series. Oh, sorry, what? Oh, I just, um... Imagine if... Uh... Say, like, The Empire Strikes Back started, like... Right at the, um... The medal ceremony at the end of episode four. Yeah. And they just, like, annihilated 99% of the Rebels right there. Like oh, I it'll be like hate that, it when movies do that's that. basically what the Alien Three did to Alien Two. I hate it when they start the sequel and then they just like they're like, all right, let's just do a completely different story and just kill off everybody and just say like, oh, it's a well, different they, well, cast now. They didn't. They didn't kill off everybody. They killed off all but like Ripley. <laughs> the only movie that gets to do that is the Suicide Squad. <laughs> yeah, there. Then it's fine. But, uh, yeah, so, let's see, other movies I've seen, so I already mentioned the one missed call, I've seen both the Japanese and the, the remake, I, I think they're both okay, um, easily the worst I have ever seen is, um, Paranormal Activity 1 through 3. Oh, I, I'm so <laughs> glad you mentioned those, because, well, I'll, I'll let you go first. Yeah, the, here's the thing. I'm sure I saw some horror movies growing up, but I don't really remember them. But, like, the first time I watched one that I can remember was my me and my sister, we rented One Missed Call and the first Paranormal Activity. And that was the first one we watched out of the two. And it genuinely spooked me the first time, being like, that's the first time I've ever watched one. Um... And, like, any subsequent viewing, I was just like, this acting is so fucking awful. It's <laughs> just, just, I'd rather be shot. But they, they kept making them because they cost so little to make, I bet. Yeah, pretty oh, yeah. much. Horror movies, they, uh, like, literally, like, horror movies make bank. 
because there's just like there's a very specific audience that just will, will see any mm-hmm. anyone that they see like compared to it like action blockbusters anything they'll go see that uh and since again a lot of like the found so ever since like blair witch and like found footage like movies it became mm-hmm. like super cheap to make and super easy to just like you know pump out like formulaic ones and they always make money so they keep going yeah. for instance um... the ring fucking it should have stopped at the second one god damn it <laughs> yeah it was like i like, when I watched it the second time, and like I said, I was just like, this is the acting so bad and whatever. I then, like, we had a DVR at the time, so I, like, I recorded, like, a whole shitload of movies to watch. Mm-hmm. And I went to watch the second and third one, and I'm just, like, sitting through both of them, like, this is so... <laughs> this is dog shit bad. <laughs> yeah. It's not even... Enter- it's not e- It's barely entertaining. It's only really entertaining because it's so shitty, and not even in a fun way. Like, like how I say I can watch uh, the original Suicide Squad or The Boss Baby or something like that. They're bad, but I can laugh how stupid the plots are. So there's that. But this was just like, yeah, it was like watching paint dry. And this is paranormal. What'd you say? This is paranormal activity you're talking about? Yeah, because it was, oh. it, was, it, was her- it was terrible. Um, and I already said my bloody Valentine. Or did I? I, f- I, we, yeah, I, I, know I'm, I don't I, think he did. Yeah, I think actually that we were talking about that before we started. But um, oh yeah, I've seen what apparently is a sequel to the original My Bloody Valentine. or But it's not like My Bloody Valentine 2. It's just the same title takes place years later um that one's more of a it's less horror and more just jump scare gore killings yeah Uh, it's it's amusing in that sense there's randomly uh just like a lot of these have there's always this really unnecessary nudity like there's a whole scene. This like this this hooker and this trucker are in a hotel room having sex, and then nice. He uh he goes to leave. Like she, she for some reason thinks he's in love with her, and he's just like like just throws some money at her and like yeah whatever you're just I'm just here to fuck you and whatever and he leaves, and she without getting dressed just grabs a pistol and like goes out after him. Like yeah that makes sense. And then she's just chased by the killer while she's naked and just like, why? Like, <laughs> I don't mind seeing some titties, but it's just always so unnecessary in horror movies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that was the same, it's the same thing in the 2009 Friday the 13th. There was, that movie was, that wasn't a horror movie. That was a fucking porno. There's what's so the, much fucking nudity. In, I I think <laughs> no. I remember a sequence. This isn't related to the nudity part of it, but how stupid it was. I remember these two. This guy. I, I'm assuming he was already high or something, walking through the woods, and like this dialogue was like, because he like he finds like a whole bunch of weed just growing in the middle of the woods, and he's just like, look at all the fucking weed, man. There's so much <laughs> fucking weed. I'm like, give me a fucking break. <laughs> You're already high. There's oh nothing God. funnier than when movies are like, insert like random re- references to like weed jokes when it, you yeah. can clearly tell the writers have never done drugs. <laughs> and exactly. It's just like, and it's just like, what do you, like there's a, um, this isn't a horror movie, but it might as well be because it's very bad. Uh, L- Little Italy. The one with Hayden Christensen. There's like a scene where like, because it's about like rival pizza stores or whatever. And there's a scene where like they, one store like swaps out the other's oregano with like marijuana. And then like there's people like, they're like eating, the people that eat the pizza, they're like dancing on the tables. <laughs> and like, you know, going like, woo, yeah. And it's like, and like Hayden Christensen's character just walks over and he like sniffs the oregano and he goes, pa, that ain't oregano. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, is this what you think we do? It's just everybody partying like a Master, a this isn't oregano. <laughs> what in the fuck? I gotta watch this now because it sounds really dumb. Yeah. Oh, it's so stupid. There's like a whole scene where like this like cop is like feeling down like Hayden Christensen. And she's like basically Ooh. like groping at him. <laughs> and she, nice. she's like, oh, what we got under here, huh? We got some strong ass abs right underneath here. And everyone's just staring at her. <laughs> like, like there's like a whole what crowd of people God. just watching. <laughs> because of Obi-Wan. <laughs> Oh god, it's so it's it's a and it's it's just such a weird movie. They wow. mentioned pizza like eight hundred times. <laughs> like that's like all they eat is just pizza. <laughs> Sounds like I should get a pizza while I watch it. And yeah, you're gonna oregano. Have to yeah, with yeah. some good old oregano. With a yeah, mm. oregano. Wink, wink. <laughs> that's the other thing. Uh, Hayden Christensen, he has like an accent in it, like an Italian accent, or what he tries to do. But like he's oh from like my... it's like. But it's like Little Italy in Canada. So it's not like Little Italy like in New York. It's like Toronto Little Italy. And no one else has an Italian accent. So the whole time you're just kind of switching back and forth between this like, Hey yo, I'm here just making this pizza. And then, like, and then sometimes it just drops like entirely. I need to see And this. no yeah, one this, else has this, it. This sounds like cancer, but the good kind. I'm it's just so a mad, like... I'm sure it sounds different, but I'm just imagining him being like, I don't like to send. <laughs> it's a cool send it up. <laughs> Anyways. Oh oh, oh, oh. Scary movies. Um, That's a scary movie. Uh, <laughs> horror movies. Six Foot did, uh, I think you said that you watched this series, but The Conjuring? Uh, I haven't seen the first one. I, I don't <laughs> think I... No, I haven't seen The Conjuring, no. Oh, the first one and the second one aren't bad, but then once it starts getting onwards, I challenge myself to watch all of them. Oh god, it gets really bad. <laughs> I have a I have a funny story about that actually. Yeah. <laughs> so um, me and my roommates, we were gonna do like a movie night, right? And so we were doing like you know we're gonna watch The Conjuring, but um, mm -hmm. earlier in the day, I can't even remember why, but for some reason we turned the brightness on our TV settings down, and we forgot to fix it. And so, like, the entire time we were watching it, we couldn't see shit. <laughs> and so the whole time, we're just looking at it like, who lighted this movie? Why is it so dark? I can't tell what's happening. And we just couldn't pay attention to any of it. And then by the end of it, we realized, wait a minute. <laughs> it's not just the movie. The TV's dark. Reminds so me I have, of... like, no idea what happened. Reminds me of, well, not horror, but reminds me of when I was watching the Umbara arc on my new, like, I, when I had got my 4K TV, it was like, the brightness settings were really low by default. So when I'm watching the Umbara, it's like, I, I can barely see anything that's happening. For those of you that don't know, Umbara, like, the Clone Wars Umbara is, like, a very dark planet. Like, it's nighttime all the time. But, yeah. It's a scary, I think that counts as horror. I think that's a... You got war crimes in there. That's pretty scary. <laughs> yeah, a better a better horror episode is that Brain Invaders one where like they got the fucking Geonosian worms like turning clones into zombies essentially. Yeah, that was a fun one. That is actually the first episode of the Clone Wars I ever saw. Like I saw the movie first, obviously. And I was then immediately like, yeah, this this sucks. And then I had been watching uh, Ben 10, uh, like, I think it was the first iteration of the show. And then there was supposed to be, like, a, a live-action movie. So I was, like, <sighs> waiting for that. And there oh, just happened. Yeah. And it was like, I switched over, and they're like, oh, uh, coming up next is the, uh, you know, Clone Wars. And I'm like, it showed like a little preview for it with the zombie shit, and I'm like, okay, what's this? I watched, I think it was the second half of the ep episode or whatever, and I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? And I'm like, yeah, this, I'm not watching this show. This looks really dumb. And then I actually watched it later on. I'm like, hey, that was a, that was an interesting little arc. 
Yeah, it's hard to get people into the show sometimes when you're like, okay, just this arc's kind of weird, so you gotta, you just gotta, yeah. gotta power through like the weird one. E squad. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Let me think. Any other movies I can think of? Oh yeah, J Have I got you ever one. Seen, um... Oh yeah. Can... What is can what is it? No, you can go. Uh, I was gonna say Jaws. Yes. That's oh one. yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's like I guess a little bit of backstory. I think. Well, when did that movie come out? Like nineteen seventy? Was it nineteen seventy five or? Yep, nineteen seventy five. Yeah, my dad saw that in the theaters back like way back in the day, and uh, well, not literally, but he's like. It was almost like shit your pants scary because I mean, it, it's yeah obviously it's one of those movies where the you know the monster isn't revealed until like much much later into the movie and it's like you mm -hmm. barely see him so it's you know obviously the horror is most of the horror is not knowing what this fucker looks like. I, I mean, can, uh... I mean, you, you know it's a shark, but like how big it is and how scary it looks, sort of thing. That was one of those movies that just like, it was such like a story to it, like it like it's like the main example of like this movie had an effect on like people's perception of the world because so many yeah, people yeah. got scared by the shark that it was just like all of a sudden sharks became this huge danger and for like the next like fifty years everybody's like oh my god, what if a shark gets me in the water? <laughs> <laughs> Especially now something? watching it though, it's funny. Yeah. So, there you go. Yeah, I was heroicus. Were you gonna say something? Yeah, so I can attest to that movie. Actually, that was that was the true first horror movie I saw. Now that it's coming back to me, uh, we were camping, and they had like a, a rec center or whatever, and they had like a big TV in there, and they would do like like I don't know if it was nightly, but they had like I'm pretty sure they did like a, a movie every night. And they had Jaws, and, like, we all went and watched that, and, um, my family, to this day, still laughs at, um, there's a bit where they're, they go, some character goes diving, I don't remember who, but they go up to, like, like a wreckage of, like, a boat or something, and, like, this head just, like, floats down in front of the guy, and he, like, freaks out. And, like, when that head came down, I fucking jumped, like, three feet. It scared the <laughs> shit out of me. I, I was like, shit, how old was I at the time? I had to have been 10 or younger. Probably younger. Mm. And, yeah, holy shit, that fucking spooked me. The, the one scene in that movie that, like, made me go, like, holy shit, was, I think it was... I think it was, like, the first time we actually see, like, the shark. Well, obviously, the opening scene is, uh... Is it a... No, I think it's... Is it a kid or is it a woman? I forget, but... It's a woman. Yeah, it's yeah, a kid. So that, that's the first one. But the second one where, like, we... Like, we see, like, the crowded beach and... You know, it's like, there's a few misdirects as to, like... You know, you think the shark is coming, but... Then when the real shark comes and attacks, it's like they don't show it right away. Like, you just see it in the background as, like, the water just gets all bloody all of a sudden. It's like, that made me go, holy shit! Like, they don't fo- because they don't really focus on it right away. Yeah. Um, on the topic of older horror movies, who here has seen The Exorcist? I've only not, seen- I've only seen me. the parody of it in the scary movie, too. Oh, it's classic that's another like one that's another one my dad like shit himself when he saw that in there's, theaters there's i i not to sound like a fucking egomaniac or like talk myself up but i don't get scared by horror movies that much but the thing is, is there's one scene in the exorcist this is a bit of a spoiler if you guys are okay with that um mm -hmm. there's this scene where the girl who's possessed it crawls down the stairs on her hands like get upside down and when she gets to the bottom of the stairs she opens her mouth and screams and blood just comes out of her mouth it was fucking 
scary. Nice. It's good. It's good. Uh, it's a very classic, and you can see that it was probably scary, but there's some scenes in there you're like, oh, that's that's a fucking mannequin. Oh, that's this, that's this, that's this. But it's, it's, it's worth a watch. It's a classic. Yeah, it's definitely on my watch list. That's one of those ones that's been like parodied like so many times, but it's like it was apparently that good, so it's like, you know, it's probably deserving of it. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, lasting impact on horror. I think that's an interesting thing about horror movies too, is that they said I feel like they tend to leave more of like an impact on like pop culture as a whole. Mm -hmm. Like especially in like terms of references and like callbacks that you see in different things. Yeah, like, it feels like you, like, kind of know, like, a lot about it, even if you haven't seen it, like, you know, from, like, Jason's Mask to, like, you know, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like, Saw and all that kind of stuff. It's just, like, mm -hmm. people, like, know it and the iconography is so, like, prominently featured that people just can take a look at it and immediately realize, like, oh, yeah, that's that movie, right? Mm-hmm. Like, with Freddy Krueger and its claw, you can tell that. Mm -hmm. It's better. Um, yeah, what's another? Oh, I remember when I was a kid, a horror movie that scared the fuck out of me was called Dead Silence, where it's like, if you scream, these dolls take your tongue. But like now looking back, it's a fucking stupid movie. <laughs> it's just a, they did a quiet place before a quiet place. Oh, yeah, damn quiet place. That was, um, that was an interesting one. It was. I still haven't seen the second one. But, I still uh, haven't I seen any of them. Same. So, pretty good. It's like, a bit terrible. I've, yeah, yeah I've, I, haven't, I haven't seen the uh, second one either. I... Another yeah. one that like I remember like people were raving about like a year or two ago before COVID, obviously. The movie Parasite. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that, it, but yeah, if you probably have. So what are your thoughts on it? That was a movie that um, I felt <laughs> I, like, you know, because it came out right. I saw it in theaters because it was like a special showing of at, like this, like, um, like arts, like center or whatever. And everyone was like raving about it and like, oh, my God, this is like, you know, crazy big movie. Um, I saw it and I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> And like it's good. Like I like I recognize that it was like I was like the the visuals are really good and the sound design and like the way that like the performances and the writing it was all like there, but like I didn't understand what it was about, <laughs> and so I left the theater and I'm just thinking to myself like, did I miss something? <laughs> like is it because it's a different like it's a Korean movie? Is it because it's like so there's like a there's just some like specific aspect that I didn't understand? But like across the board. Like, I can't find anyone else that doesn't get it. <laughs> like, it feels like every person that I've seen that's seen it is like, it's perfect. It's like the highest rated movie on Letterboxd. And I'm just like, I'm sitting here like, it's not bad. I liked it. I I just don't like, like, I don't get it. <laughs> like, I don't know. Something about it, man. Hmm. I definitely, though, like, there are some, uh, there are a lot of good ones. I like, because I think it's, I think I like horror movies that are like, they have like kind of a point to them. Uh, like right. I enjoy like a, I enjoy a good monster movie every now and then. Like just kind of like you know like a, like, crazed serial killer just goes on the run. You got to try to outrun him. But uh, mm -hmm. the ones that I usually like that stick with me more are the ones that have like, some sort of like you know, message behind it or some sort of like, real life existential kind of fear to it or something that like, you can sort of relate to. Mm -hmm. It's so like kind of. Kind of going off of that, or go ahead, finish. Sorry. I oh, know I was just going to bring up. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen Us yet. Oh no, the, no the, I haven't. I've heard it's that one. Heard good things about it, but no, I haven't seen it. Yeah, that one really got me because, like, the whole like theme of the, the whole like it's in the title is literally like you know like fearing yourself. Like, what if like you're the most like dangerous threat out there to you? And like, it's just like I don't know something about. Something about the way Jordan Peele films horror movies, man. He manages to make them, like, really unsettling and really, like, personal in the way that it sort of, like, feels like it's like, oh, damn. Hmm. And it has, like, a cool twist at the end. Like, I would not spoil it. If you have it, like, don't... I wouldn't look it up. 
But um, there's like a twist at the end that like brought the whole thing together, and it just was such like a like it kind of like recontextualized the whole movie, and it it made it for me. Like that's like one of my favorite movies because. Of Mm-hmm. Which is interesting because I mean Jordan Peele is a comedian primarily, so I guess to see him like do I, I guess like do more serious projects like that, it's well, it's like him in the Twilight Zone. It's like I, I I can't take him seriously, but I mean I guess as a director, I don't really have an opinion on him yet. I'll have to see that movie and get back to you. Yeah, no, he's great. Uh, like uh, Get Out was also really good. That was like his, like the first one that I saw, and it was just, I think it's a little better than us. But I like personally, if I had to like pick between the two, I like some of the choices in us more. But um, yeah, I know I watched the Twilight Zone show like a while ago, like I want to say a year or two ago. Like I caught up on it, and it's it's fine. <laughs> like it, it's yeah. definitely not that. Like it's like you know some episodes work, some episodes are just kind of like all right, I guess. Yeah, it didn't stick with me enough for me to like remember what was going on. I love the original Twilight Zone, but oh, it's, yeah, it, like it's it's a fucking classic. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's, but yeah, there is. There are some episodes I remember that were just like, yeah, that was kind of just okay, but other ones are like, you know, really good shit. Like mm-hmm. I think my I think my favorite episode is the uh, is the the episode's called Time Enough at Last. It's Burgess Meredith plays that dude that loves to read. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I remember that episode. I remember there was a parody they did on a uh, Futurama, where it was like they did that, but like the spooky door, and like in it, the dude was like, you know, like ah, finally I have the the world to read my books, and then like his glasses broke, and he was like, no, well it's okay, I have I have good pretty good vision, I should be able to see it, and then like his eyes fell out, and he was like, no, um... and, well. Good thing I learned how to read Braille, and then like his arm falls off, and he's just like, no, <laughs> and he just falls over and like dies. <laughs> it's just like this has been the spooky door. <laughs> like... <laughs> oh yeah, I, I guess now since we're on the subject of Futurama, well, you know Matt Greening or whatever, um, does Treehouse of Horror fall under this category? Since um, yes and no. If we wanted to spend a bit of time talking about that, if not, we can move on. Uh, I would be willing to, but the thing is, is it's it's like episodes from a show, so it doesn't exactly fall under the topic. But then again, we haven't really been following the topic. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with Out. just shooting the shit about it. <laughs> Don't. We've been talking about horror. we've been talking about horror movies. What are you on about? Well, you know what happened? This you breastfeed a donkey, huh? Bold like of you to idea. assume that I already bold. Wait, no. Bold of you to assume <laughs> I'm not already. Mm. They say Don- Barocus. Donkey breastfeeding. <laughs> Highly recommend it. I, I'm just distracted because I have a hair in my mouth and I can't fucking get it out. That's because you were breastfeeding a donkey. Good mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. I will say um, yeah. Treehouse of Horror. I haven't seen like a lot of it. Uh, but I do remember when I was a kid, there was like one where it was like the like got to they like everyone got turned into their costumes thing. And I would just mm-hmm. the only thing I remember from it is that like the mayor was like a hamburger and there were like dogs like eating him at the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And like that like freaked me out as a kid. <laughs> like that like I got, like I only remember that one small clip, but when I was a kid I was like, Oh my god, he's getting eaten by those puppies. Oh no. <laughs> like I, I love the one where um, it was making fun of the Raven by Edgar yeah. Allan Poe. I fucking love it. James Earl Jones was the perfect narrator, and then just Homer just getting more and more fucking agitated as the thing went on was hilarious. That, that's actually the first Treehouse of Horror episode. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, oh wait, wait, is that the very first one? It's either the first or the second one. Oh wow! Yeah, I no, remember no, that, that was like no, the twist no. at the end was it was. That was the first one, I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. I'll look it up. Give me a minute. Yeah, I'm, I remember I, that I, the I whole think... thing was uh, James Earl Jones was voicing it was like Maggie at the end or something like that. Like the like Maggie took out her like um, whatever <laughs> and was just like it was just James Earl Jones's voice. <laughs> oh yeah, I think uh, that's I... at a later episode. But yeah, that he does he does do that for Maggie. I I forget when, but 
Yeah, the Treehouse of Horror episode are some of the best written Simpson episodes. Like, just the, the most entertaining and ones that are, like, worth rewatching. Not saying The Simpsons isn't worth rewatching, but those episodes in particular yeah, cause are, are fucking in awesome. In your words, uh, yeah. it's like, yeah, because the writers just get to just write this off the wall shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it uh, it was the first Treehouse of Horror episode, which was in season two. <laughs> cool. I gotta watch that shit like the whole show because I haven't seen like a Simpsons episode in I don't know how long. Um, I would watch up until like season ten, maybe, if you're feeling daring. Because the thing is, is like at a certain point. We should definitely do a Simpsons podcast episode, by the way. But at a certain point, it kind of trails off of being as great as it was. And then there's just a rapid decline after the uh, season 20. Yeah. Like, I personally was watching, like, a lot of it up until, like, season 20. And then... I mean, I have to say, like, the first ten seasons were, they were more interesting, more engaging. Mm -hmm. And then after that, yeah, it just kind of died down a bit. And, like, season 18 and 19, like, suddenly, like, for me, they were like, hey, this is getting pretty good again. And then it just kind of, like, it's just okay after that. So mm -hmm. I just haven't, I've been watching a ton of it. It's, like, it, it's good, like, if I wake up and I just put that on and I'm just, like, watching that while I'm waking up or in the background or something it's fine but yeah. I don't really pay attention like I don't watch it I kind of just listen to it because I can I can pretty much visualize all the animation at this point whenever I close my eyes I see Homer Simpson oh not good heroic is heroic is <laughs> don't have a cow man I can run back. Yeah, I just wanted to quick tell everybody, uh don't watch Hubie Halloween. <laughs> that that's my that's my quick PSA. Never watch what? that movie. What's it called and, uh, so we can not watch it? Hubie Halloween. It's okay. an Adam Sandler movie that came out on Netflix last year. And okay. it's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> And it's an Adam Sandler movie, after all. Yeah, yeah it's just a lot of so. just like he has some some movies that are pretty enjoyable, and then the rest is just not really good. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's necessarily his fault or whatever. Uh, maybe he just gets paired up with like a lot of shitty movies. Well, Who apparently knows? the reasoning is that he he literally makes intentionally bad movies because he just hires his friends and they just dick around. And then he gets a huge paycheck. <laughs> like, which, like, I mean, some respect. He's just, whatever, make your money, I guess, but... Yeah. I wish I could do that. That would be fucking awesome, just all of us doing shitty movies. Um, but, on that note, our hour is up. We had a great time, everyone, right? Proud. Now, <laughs> on that note, we're gonna have to leave. So, thank you guys for listening, and... Thank you, Circle Man, for guest starring. Oh, yeah, thanks. No problem. I'm happy to be here. All right, goodbye, everyone. Wave. Okay. Okay. Oh, Kiss yeah. in the sky. Bye. I'm waving. Yeah, okay. And... Woohoo! <laughs>